NBA basketball is back. And in this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, me and my brother James are going to share our thoughts on the rookie performances. It wasn't an exciting night to be a rookie in the 2024 NBA draft class. But stay tuned to hear our thoughts on Zachary Reese, Reed Shepard, Ron Holland, T. John Salon, Donovan Klingon, Zach, Edie, Kalel Ware, and Jalen Wells. shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, along with my co-host, who happens to be my brother, James Barlow. And before we get into this episode, I want to let you know that it is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed visit fanduel.com and also i want to let you know that your favorite podcast has a newsletter introducing the locked on daily newsletter which covers your favorite team so if you're a mavs fan go to locked on mavs locked on lakers locked on heat locked on blazers pick a team and it's your one stop for ultimate team and league coverage and it is delivered right to your inbox you can sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. Start your day with the all-new free Locked On newsletter for your favorite team. And if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, share, comment, share your thoughts, click the bell so you can be notified every time we drop because we're coming at you with an episode five days a week. But... If the rookies perform like they performed last <laughs> night, <laughs> <it's gonna> be... <laughs> in the preseason, we, we were able to come up with some good content every day about the rookie performances. Sometimes we didn't have enough time in an episode to talk about all the performances because rookies were getting significant playing time. And, you know, it's preseason, so, you know, it's not the time to overreact. And I knew that the minutes would fluctuate. But opening night was a definite welcome to the NBA moment for a lot of rookies. Let me start off with the good. One rookie showed up, showed out. Eves Misi. I know we don't have him in the rundown, but it's okay because he was hooping, Ralph. Yeah. Hooping. I think he had 12 points, seven rebounds three highlight blocks where he just came out of nowhere with smacking shots from the weak side. He showed good touch in the paint. He had an offensive rebound. He shot it backwards like Wilt Chamberlain. But, like, him and DeJounte have, like, he has instant chemistry with DeJounte Murray. And I know DeJounte got hurt last night, so I don't know how that's going to work. But, like, he looked he looked the part. He looked everything that we liked about Eves Missy. My only concerns are Zion didn't play. Well, actually, that's not necessarily a concern. Zion didn't play, so there are more opportunities, especially in the paint, because we know when Zion does play, he's going to have a ball in his hands. He's going to go split pick and rolls. He decides of a refrigerator. I still don't know how he does that. But as long as Eves can mirror his minutes with DeJounte, he should be productive. Like, he was very, very good last night. He looked like a stud. Just energy, everything. Shout out to Eves Missy. Yeah, he landed in a really good situation, and it it happens every year. Fit is the most important thing you need as a rookie. Fit, and he plays a position where I think it's kind of easy to, if you have the right fit, I think it's kind of easy to be productive because your job is to protect the paint, roll to the rim, and just be a play finisher, and he did that. I I don't want to overreact, but based off of one game – it it looks like he could end up being their starting center sooner rather than later. Well, here's my thing about that. They started Tice. Tice will shoot threes, especially corner threes. I right. think Eve should continue to come off the bench because, again, we don't know what it looks like with Zion out there. Yeah. Also, as far as him landing in the perfect spot, I don't know if this is the perfect spot if C.J. McCollum is your starting point guard. C.J. is a bucket, been a bucket. But there are plays that he doesn't make or just not in his repertoire because, you know, the step back game is so mean 
that DeJounte Murray does make. So I think them having like a point guard, a guy that can really, really pass helps out. But again, that's that's just my early assessment. But like, I don't know if he's going to start, but I don't think it's going to matter because the minutes that he plays with a playmaker are going to be very, very good, especially when you got Jordan Hawkins out there who you can't leave alone. They didn't have Trey Murphy out there. Mm-hmm. So like that spacing is going to be great. I just want to see what it looks like with him and Zion together on the court. But the key word that you said was minutes and not a lot of rookies got minutes yesterday. Oh, yeah, true. And not a lot of got opportunities. We'll, we'll start at the top. Zachary Risa played 19 minutes and he was two of eight from the floor, seven points, one rebound, zero assist. I'm not here to give out grades, but even though he didn't shoot the ball well, I think that there is a clear path for him to get minutes and be productive this year. I did like the confidence. Yeah, he, he I, was out there getting them up. The French boy is not scared, man. Yeah, I do like that because, and I've mentioned it before, I went to see him play multiple times last year in person, and he didn't shoot a lot of shots. I thought he was very passive. And so seeing him confident and letting it fly is a good thing. Of course, you don't expect him to go two for eight all the time. And he got eight shots in, in 19 minutes. But I do think that he is going to be productive. And he has a playmaker, like you said, with yeah. Missy. Having a playmaker, especially if you're not like a shot creator, is very important. And so I, I look for him to, to be solid this year. Reed Shepard. I know Richard, we talked about the last episode two days ago. I think Richard had him as rookie of the year. And my question for him is, is he going to get enough minutes to be rookie of the year? And opening night, he only played 16 minutes, four points, two or five shooting. I'm not surprised he didn't play a lot of minutes. I'm not either. But they lost to the Hornets with Brandon Miller only playing like 11 minutes per game. But what did you see from Reed? So – I think, oh, I know the word is out. Reed Shepard has a burner, right? Chase him off the line, but in mid-range and pick and roll, he can still get that off. So I think LaMelo, excuse me, blocked his shot twice, his mid-range on pick and roll. LaMelo's not really known for his on-the-ball defense. It comes and it goes, but he is 6'7", 6'8". But he put in the effort knowing that, hey, if this dude does get this look at the foul line, he's probably going to make it. So he chased him. He stayed tight on the screen. I think Reed's going to have to start jamming defenders and pick and roll because unless, you know, teams get lazy. Because if they do get lazy, that's like a layup for him. I thought he took good shots. He didn't make them. I mean, I mean he's two for five. But he did have, like, I believe, two assists, three rebounds. Like, he did other things. I don't think his – I think 15 minutes, like you said, is probably going to be where he's at throughout the season until it either gets ugly – or it doesn't get ugly in their playing team. What do you think they're going to be, though? I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they lost to the Hornets last night. Yeah, with and the Hornets were playing, like, without a starter, two starters. Mark Williams didn't play. I mean, it's open at night. Anything can happen. I mean, you know, no disrespect to the Pistons. They started off 2-0 and last year, and, you know, the, the wheels fell off. But uh, I, I think they should be in position to be a playing team. But it, I also don't think that they're going to, like, fold early if they're not because Aime Udoka is stubborn. And every time Aime turns on the TV, he sees the Boston Celtics hitting a three. Like, that's, you know, that's in his face. So I think I think Reed's going to play 15 minutes unless it just gets really, really bad for them. Let's talk about Ron Holland. 15 minutes, six points, three rebounds, two of six from the floor. Ron is a player that he's going to – find a way to be productive no matter how minutes he play how many minutes he plays i mean he's just that energetic that motor he just finds a way to make an impact i know i've talked to some people in there <laughs> about his preseason if you like ron holland you were encouraged if you didn't like ron holland then you know you pointed out just his his flaws or, or or whatever i mean there's there's one nba scout that i speak to on the regular and he has consistently compared Ron Holland to Jerome Williams. I don't necessarily see the comparison, but he's like, he's a modern day junkyard dog. If Jerome Williams played in today's NBA, he believes that that's the role Ron Holland will play. But what did you think about Ron's performance? You know, Ron brought the energy. Uh, He's another guy that's not shy. I believe he got up, what, six shots in 15 minutes. 
Uh, I will say this about Ron. He had an offensive rebound. He tried to take off in transition from outside the dive line on somebody. He got fouled. But uh, he missed all of his jump shots, but they were on target, and they looked good. And I don't know if that's – you can take that however which way you want it. Some of these guys that miss jump shots, some of these rookies that miss jump shots, we'll get to them later, their misses look bad. And, you know, that's – I guess you can say that's an – it can – for me, it's an indicator of how you've progressed as a shooter. But Ron's misses looked encouraging. Am I buying him long-term as a shooter? No, it's just one game. But it looked like he's been working on his jumper, and he shot it with confidence. I mean, confidence is never an issue for him. But yeah. they looked good. They didn't go in. You'll take that, the energy he brought in those 15 minutes that he played. I have my concerns. I mean, if the my numbers are correct, he's one for 15 on jumpers, including the preseason. Yeah. it's it's Yeah, he can't shoot. <laughs> All right. When we return, we're going to talk about T. John Solana, a guy who we <laughs> talked about a whole lot in the preseason. He got a D in PCD which is kind of scary considering that Brandon Miller didn't play. He thought that would have been. Mark Williams didn't play. I don't think that's going to impact him. We're going to talk about Donovan Klingon and we got to spend a significant amount of time talking about Zach Eady. But before we get into the second segment, let's talk about game time, which is my favorite app when it comes to purchasing tickets. Why do I like game time so much? Because it's not just for sporting events, it's concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And on their app, they have all-in pricing. All you have to do is toggle the feature, and it shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Also, Game Time gives you views of your seat. You get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy, so you know exactly where you're going to sit and your view. They also have the lowest price guarantee. If you find something cheaper, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Again, terms apply, create an account, use the redeem code. L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. All right, second segment. T John Salon got a D N P C D. I don't know what he could have done more in the preseason to show that he deserves at least a little bit of minutes. I mean. <laughs> I probably get criticized for saying this. At least give him like the brawny minutes. You know, you snuck him in with like two minutes or something. But a DNP CD in his first game as the sixth pick in the draft after having a productive preseason is is interesting. See, and I brought up Mark Williams not playing because okay, then you could say Nick Richards is starting five, which he started, and then you say we'll go small. Grant Williams is the backup five, right? But they played Musa Diabate 15 minutes last night. I didn't expect that. I thought T. John was going to play 15 minutes. I thought those were T. John's minutes. I, I don't have any words for that. Was he sick? He didn't show up on my injury report when I was putting together my prize pick slip, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about prize picks later on. <laughs> As of now, I mean, again, it's one game. But- it is one game. We don't know how long Brandon Miller is going to be out, but that was surprising to me. I mean, you got, you know, for all the people that said this class is weak, and I am one of the people that believe that this wasn't a strong class. You can go back to like February. I'm like, if we saw a significant amount of guys in the 23 class spend a lot of their rookie years in the G League, how many guys in 24 are going to be in the G League as lottery picks? In an opening night, we've seen two of the top eight picks get a DNP CD with Ron um, with Rob Dillingham on, on opening night. All right, let's talk about Donovan Klingon. Klingon didn't get a DNP CD. We did talk about his minutes and how it could be impacted when Robert Williams comes back. But Klingon played 13 minutes, two points, one of two from the floor, made some defensive plays showed his defensive impact stuff that may not show up on the stats, but I did see like several possessions when he was in early in the game that the Warriors just did not test him in the paint. 
What did you think about Klinger's performance? Uh, <laughs> he was just running around, man. I mean, he only played 12 minutes. I think he's going to be productive, but they need to find a way to get out, get DeAndre Ayton out of there. It's like nitpicking, man. There was there really wasn't much to see. He had a layup. He should have dunked the ball. I mean, we could talk about that. Like, yo, dunk the ball, man. Trace Jackson Davis cooked him on a spin move. Like, I mean, I think Kling is going to be okay, but yeah, man, I don't know what Portland. I really don't know what Portland's doing. Like, they didn't start Scoot. I don't know. I don't know. That's your team, Rob. You might need to put that call in, man. I don't. I don't know, man. I I have. No idea. I can't say I watch the Blazers every night like I used to. I watched the first half of the game, and then I, I ended up falling asleep. All right. We got to talk about it. Zach Eady had, um, you know, he, he came into the game or this season as the, the odds favorite to win rookie of the year. He was the player or still is the player that, I would assume is going to get the most minutes and has the only one that started the only rookie that started. I think he has at least in theory, the clearest path to get significant minutes. I can't imagine him having a worse game than what he played yesterday. I mean, I just give you the the stats, 15 minutes, five points, two of two of four from the floor he had he fouled out. I mean, he fouled out with nine minutes <laughs> left. In Who is he fouling? Hey, the Utah Jazz were picking on him. It of was course. like, I mean, I knew teams are going to attack him. I, I had mentioned I went to the Mavs game when they played the Grizzlies on the, the first preseason game. In the first play, the Mavs went at him with Dinwiddie and and you know, Edie got to stop. But the way the Utah Jazz were going at him and picking on him, I saw some stat. I saw it on Twitter. I should have saved it, but it was basically breaking down what the Jazz shot from the floor when Edie was when, in Edie's minutes, and it was like blistering. It was like the offensive rating was crazy. It was like a thirty-point difference from when he was off the floor when he was on the floor. I mean, he had three fouls in his first eight minutes. What are your thoughts on Edie's performance? Man, look, I didn't see the, the 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 tweet about the stats. I just know when I watched the film, John Collins was going at him, right? And, like, John Collins is a play finisher. You know, he's going to dunk. He's going to make some threes. You know, John Collins saw the ball, and he had a, a 2002 elbow post up with Zach Edie guarding him, and he shot a jumper. Like, I mean, it's expected, you know, you're going to go at rookies. Like I had mentioned this previously, like I've never seen Trace Jackson Davis spin baseline in an NBA game. And he was like, oh, I got clinging on me. I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, Edie was, he wasn't good, but you know what? It was the first game. I want to shoot him some bell. That Gortat screen that he sets for, for um, John Morant is, is that's going to work. And he wears on people. Like, you can see he's out there throwing people around. Every offensive rebound, he's running into your back. Uh, if nothing else, he's going to beat people up. But you'd like to see him be a lot more productive. I was expecting him to be better because, remember, he matched up with uh, Walker Kessler in summer league, and he kicked Walker Kessler. But what it looked like Walker was like, hey, man, this is a new day. I think Walker at 14 and 16. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody made a, a a tweet, and I I mean I have a love hate relationship with Twitter, but some of the takes one guy tweeted, I like how Zach Eady got the best whistle in the history of college basketball and fouled out in 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 That's funny. I mean I imagine we're gonna see that a lot. We're going to see teams attacking him. Another interesting stat about Zach Eady is that he played 138 college games and only fouled out one time. Dang. Yeah. I mean, it's the first night. And you know what? It's, we it's talked about night. it with Leaf. Utah, it's going to be some overreaction. Yeah, Utah, one of the best teams in the league in uh, October 30th through November <laughs> 28th. I yeah. mean, you know, it's a tough matchup, especially at home. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like – I mentioned in the preseason I was worried about his defense a little bit. And then he kind of cleaned it up. But, yeah, it's, we'll see what happens. But it's, it's opening night. Another stat. First lottery pick to foul out in a debut game since 2007. Who was that? 
Uh, I don't know. I'm just, you know, oh. just up the stats. But yeah, it's it's that's definitely going to be something I'm going to be watching a lot because it was clear, like, hey, we are going at him and attacking him. When we return, we're going to talk about Kalel Ware, Jalen Wells, who actually led all rookies in minutes. I told you. I mean, you didn't say he was going to lead all rookies in minutes. I said he was going to be that, the best wing off the bench for them for a while. Yeah, they got to they gotta find a way to play him. We'll talk a little bit about Jalen Tyson, Ryan Dunn, Kalel Mar- Ware. Maras. Maras Bazelis. But before we get into the last segment, let's talk about prize picks. I know James had a good night on prize picks. So I'll tell you a little bit about prize picks for those that do not know. Prize picks is the best place to get real money with over 10 million members and a billion dollars in awarded winnings. Prize picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. All you have to do is pick more or less on at least two players. For a shot to win up to a hundred times your money, run your game all season long with Prize Picks. All right, James, tell them how it worked for you last hey, night. Man, listen, look, I don't want to make the block hot, but Zubots points rebounds. They got to play through him. He's gonna score. Damian Lillard had an off season. Jump shot is gonna be a lot better. Shout out to Grady Dick. Somebody got to shoot the ball for that Toronto team. I mean, hey, Zach Levine, somebody got to shoot the ball. So, hey, I, I hit on a pick six last night. Feeling good, slept good. Couldn't wait to withdraw that money. All right. So with prize picks, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks. All you, you need is a, as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform that has an insurance, an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks keeps your lineup live. So check it out, prizepicks.com. Download the app, use the code Locked On NBA, and you can get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, prizepicks.com. All right, the floor is yours. Which rookie? do you want to highlight starting off this third segment? Let's start off with Maras, man. I had mentioned before Ron Holland's misses. They look good. Let me tell you misses who didn't look good. We talked Maras. about this on a previous episode. Yeah, we Maras. had multiple air balls in one of the preseason games, right? Now we Him and Kuzma, about. man, some air balling kings in the preseason. Maras, first three, and again, screen, you know, you played 2K – or I used to play 2K. You definitely play NCAA football. When the screen starts shaking, your controller starts vibrating, man, it gets difficult. It's nerves. This guy's first play games. You know, I, I'm not I'm not hating. I'm just saying. Mata's first shot, air ball long. You know what? You have been labeled a Mata's hater <laughs> <laughs> by someone in the comments. But go ahead. I'm not a hater, man. I'm just calling it like I see it, man. Listen, like I said, I want everybody to get max contracts. But he shot an air ball off the rip, right? Second shot, corner three. Uh, he missed it. It looked better. That's not hate. That's the truth. He had a top of the key three. It, back iron, it was a brick. Uh, you know, I think Manos is going to play, but stuff has to happen for him, for, it to ha- uh, for him to get minutes. And they have a lot of guys. They got a lot of guards. They got a lot of wings. They got a lot of guys that can play two through four. Uh, his minutes aren't going to be there, and I don't necessarily think he's going to spend time in the G League because I think ultimately playing him is going to help you get a top three pick in the draft, which is what Chicago should be doing. But I just worry about what does it look like for Madas because I don't think he can shoot right now. And I'm sure when he starts making shots, they're going to come find me, which is fine. But what does it look like, and how does he have an impact when you – not really a shooter, and your role is so small on a team that <laughs> refuses to tank. So I think due to their proximity to the Windy City Bulls, well, on one hand, they're close, but then on the other hand, due to Chicago traffic, they're far. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, when I lived there, I went to a Windy City game, and I was staying in, in the city. I felt like, man, it was – Depending on traffic, it's quicker to drive to Milwaukee than it is to 
uh, Hoffman Estates or whatever. But I do think that, I mean, four minutes. Four he minutes. Played four, he played four minutes and they got beat by, I think, 15. Yeah. So I do think that he'll he'll spend some time in the G League, at least early in the year. And then I think hopefully they'll decide to blow it up and just give him a lot of minutes in the second half of the year. But four minutes, it's your hometown team. Let's talk about Cody Williams. You know, hey man, that's another one. I I don't know how you take zero shots in 20 minutes, but somehow Cody Williams did. I mean, but it's not surprising though. It's not surprising, but no shots. You couldn't like go get a tip in offensive rebound. Like we talk about I mean, he got two free throws. So he I mean, did get two free throws, <laughs> but I mean in the box score is zero, zero for zero. zero. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. I mentioned before, I think the G League is his best spot so he can develop, at least get some, you know, like not necessarily killer instincts, just develop his motor. But I mean, you know, he did grab four rebounds. I guess that's good, but I don't know how you don't take a shot in 20 minutes. It's it is not surprising. He actually was like third in minutes. I mean, I know him and Reese Shea both played 19. I don't have the exact seconds, but I mean he he got the opportunity. A lot of players in this class aren't really getting opportunities. I mean, we saw Klingon was drafted higher than him, only got 13. Uh um, T John didn't even play. T John didn't play. Khalil Ware only played six minutes. Mop up. Played, I mean, rounding up five minutes. He had Jared McCain played four minutes. And, and maybe that's related to, you know, the, the nasty spill that he took. But McCain only getting four minutes when they I, got. That doesn't surprise me, though, man. I told you something about McCain. They got smacked. Man, Nick Nurse does not care, bro. Nick Nurse <laughs> but, is going to play his guys. But they got smacked, James. I like, know I was watching the game. Why were you watching that game? They I lost. Watching, I was watching four games at a time, man. They lost one twenty-four to one hundred nine, and he only got four minutes. Again, it's preseason. You don't want not preseason. It's the first game. You don't want to necessarily overreact, but then also it kind of makes you wonder, like, all right, where are some of the minutes coming from? Are the coaches not trusting this rookie class? I mean, what is it? But yeah, Cody Williams zero official shot attempts but i can't say that i am 100 percent surprised i am surprised that khalil ware i thought he played well in summer league it looks like spolstra is adamant about thomas bryant being the backup center i i don't want to react over one game but i am going to overreact <laughs> miami heat I know that's a tricky franchise. You never want to count them out. I mean, they made it to the NBA Finals a couple years ago as the eighth seed. I don't know what direction they are going hey, in. Listen, I don't know if I – I think I mentioned it before when we were, like, doing mocks. I was like, yo, they need somebody young because they are teetering because their best player is Jimmy Butler. I don't know what he was doing last night, but yeah, he was in off season mode. He was in off season mode, but he's 35, man. And again, I you know, everybody not LeBron. I'm not saying Jimmy's washed. I'm just saying 35, your best player can't be 35, man. Yeah, and I, I mean, don't know what Bam was doing. Bam, you know, I don't they know, were combined man. two for 13 yeah. with 12 points. That's rough for your two all-stars. So again. You know, maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe they just had a really, really bad game. But we I think overreact, man. It's game one, man. <laughs> but I think, I mean, Thomas Bryant was, you know, he had 17 points in 16 minutes. And maybe I'm being biased towards the rookies, but I think Ware brings the dynamic to Miami that can help them right away. It was the first preseason game, and I'm joking, but I don't know if they ran that like three for him <laughs> at the end of the, the game. And in that episode, I was like, yeah, you know, they're trying to build his confidence up. I mean, they let him shoot threes. They called him plays for him to shoot the game, tying three in the clutch. I'm like, I know it's preseason, but that's a good sign. And then they just play him only six minutes. I think he needs to play more. I agree. We talked about Jalen Wells, right? Yeah, you, you can talk about it a little more. Yeah, he looked. First shot, water. Second shot, water. He somehow gets to the basket, even though he's real thin. Like I said, 
He played the most minutes last night of all, rookies. of all of the rookies. He only had six. I think he only had six points. Was it six or eight? He had six, but he was plus ten. Plus ten. You have to you have to acknowledge him when he's on the floor. Yeah, because he does not miss catch and shoot shots. And like I said, and Memphis is gonna have some issues, man, because Gigi's eventually gonna come back. Vince Williams is eventually gonna come back. What you gonna do with all those wings? Everybody can't play. I don't know, man. I I think for him, but he can. He can he can play. He impressed in the preseason. He was their leading scorer in the preseason. I think he needs to play. I mean, Marcus Smart. I don't know if you had some something going on in the offseason. Like, dude, you were out of shape. Bro, why are we yo? Why is he guarding Larry Marketing, man? <laughs> well, <laughs> why? He's out of shape. I know he won def- he let me be careful. I know he won defensive player of the year. I don't think he deserved it, but he won it. Why is he guarding Lowry, man? Lowry is seven feet tall, bro. I mean, he, and he's one of the best October, November players in the NBA. I mean, he's one of the best players in the NBA all season long, but they kind of until they tell him to stop. Yes, they put a plug on him. But Marcus Smart, I mean, he played 26 minutes, and I know he's a veteran. He finished with 11 points, five rebounds, but he was 3 11, 3 of 11 from the floor. Jalen Wells. I mean, it's only three minutes different, but Marcus Smart, I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to get traded. I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be a sick feeling if you've been with those Boston boys that whole time. You think he feel like I may I may go and do it? <laughs> at least, you know, you don't because motivated. Marcus Smart doesn't look motivated at all. And so, he was um, the captain, right? You got to be the captain. I'm saying I think he was the captain in Boston. They traded him, and they won. Yeah, so I mean, not not a rookie, but Jay Huff was closing games for the Grizzlies. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was hooping too. He was hooping. Yeah, let's talk about some of these other DNP, DNP CDs. Isaiah Kyer didn't play. Is that surprising to you? No, nah, he wasn't even in uniform. Dang, Phil yeah, Kowski I was didn't. Game, man, he wasn't in uniform because I, you know, how like they show like guys at the free throw line, and you can see like the bench. I'm like, who was on the bench in black Air Force Ones? <laughs> Is I say a guy, yo, they got to bring the dress code back. I don't want to sound like an old head, you do, <laughs> but they got to bring the dress code back at least have a little yo, bit of something. Somebody, <laughs> somebody for the next had on a fitted. <laughs> Yeah, I think Jared Vanderbilt had on a hat too. <laughs> like, dudes is just showing up to the games like they're going to the mall. Again, I don't want to sound like an old head. I'm not saying you got to wear the three piece suit and you can't wear the chains, but, but I mean, My man had on a it's like summer league out there now. <laughs> the way the way the guys are. There was something. Uh, oh, I wanted to mention you, you asked me to look it up. Uh, 2023, if you count Chet, five rookies started. All right. In 2022, five rookies started. On opening night. On opening night, excuse me. And 2021, eight rookies started opening night. 2024 draft, we had one guy. One rookie. One rookie. One rookie and only one rookie played over 20 minutes, and that was a second-round pick in Jalen Wells. I want to talk about Jalen Tyson real fast. I thought with Max Struess going down, there was an opportunity for him to start or play. They went with Dean Well or Dean Wade. Jalen played seven minutes, and those seven minutes were like when the game was way to They won by 30. So they yeah. won by 30, and he didn't get in until late. But he did get up four points, two rebounds, and one assist. Listen, he <laughs> is so productive. You play him eight minutes, he's gonna he's gonna grab a couple rebounds, get you a couple assists, get you a couple buckets. Tristan De Silva only played five minutes. I know there's some people that thought he was going to play a lot. I didn't necessarily. But he's 23. See that. Like you drafted a 23 year old dude, and again, it's the first game, but you expect him to play more than five minutes because you're supposed to be NBA ready. Yeah, I mean, he was phenomenal in in the summer league, and I'm not a big Tristan De Silva guy, but I didn't think that there was a clear path to minutes. He's not a rookie, but Jet Howard. I mean, like he's played well in summer league. Thought he was going to earn some minutes, but I don't see a clear path for him. And then Ryan Dunn, the guy that we spent a lot of time uh, talking yeah. about. We're gonna wrap it up on Ryan Dunn. Played nine minutes, had two points. Got up five shots in nine minutes. We're just going to wait it out and see if the shooting from preseason, if that was an outlier performance because history says it is. 
But speaking of confidence, he let it. He was letting it fly. His first shot was like a mid-range pull-up jumper off the dribble. Yeah, those were long though too. Those, those, yeah. Those, yeah. I will say this about Ryan Dunn again. You know, hey, I climbed on the bandwagon after the preseason, uh, and you know, it's whatever. But like James Harden was guarding him, which means that you know what, we don't respect you as a shooter, and you got to make shots, and that's what it's going to come down to him. I had talked about. Uh, in previous podcast, will he be able to keep this new confidence that he has? So he started off and didn't make any threes last night, and let's say he just bad week, right? And he doesn't make any threes or he's one for 12. What does it look like the, the next game? Is he going to revert back to Virginia, or is he going to go to the Phoenix no. Suns preseason version of himself? No, I don't – I don't. I think he's – He's going to have to shoot. I think he's going to have to shoot. He is going to be the dare shooter, as Leaf would say. He is the guy that the other team's best player is probably going to hide on because you're hoping those misses turn into rebounds and you can, one, give your star player rest, but then you want to you know, push the offense. So I could see when the Mavs play the Suns, whenever Dunn is on the floor, he's going to be guarding Luka, but Luka is going to be chilling playing Chill. free safety guarding him hoping he can turn those long rebounds in the personal fast break right. real quick Raf. sar plays tonight castle plays tonight does dillingham get off the bench i don't know i mean sar plays tonight he's gonna play 25 minutes <laughs> yeah i'll be at the Mavs spurs game which castle gonna play i my prediction is castle plays 15. Dang, you think he's gonna play 15? I think he's gonna play 15 minutes. And Rob Dillingham plays eight. Eight. Minutes. I think, yeah. I like it. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. This was the welcome to the NBA episode for the 2024 rookie class. Oh, Tyler Smith actually got like five points in two minutes. At hey, the get him up, fellas. Hey, get man, this up, rookie Tyler. class reminds me of 2K when you first get the game and you got on a brown shirt and the gray pants and you're just 60 overall and you just got to find a way to get there. Youngsters, you got to find a way to get there. You got to find a way to get there. AJ Johnson only played one minute as their first round pick. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. But that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. Once again, thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Now check out the Locked On newsletter for your favorite team. It is the one-stop ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. You can sign up for free at LockedOnDaily.com. Again, that's LockedOnDaily.com. Start your day with the all-new Locked On newsletter covering your favorite team. Once again, it's Raphael and James, and we are out of here.